for six hours through the tree farms and, and the clear cuts and uh, you arrive at the end of the road and there the wilderness begins. It's this last little fringe of ancient rainforest along the west coast of Vancouver Island. It's the last frontier as uh, our civilization um, in its last you know, 200 years of history on this continent started clearing all the ancient forests, you know, the East Coast, the Maritimes, and they moved right across the entire country. Set aside the Walden Valley. The road building stops here. The cutting stops here. It's here at the end of these roads that so many people have uh, taken a stand. Jesus Christ. A lot of people don't know that Canada has a rainforest, but in fact, we have one of the most spectacular temperate rainforests on the face of the planet. These are areas with huge trees, some of them up to 300 feet tall, uh, that live well over a thousand years old. The rainforest is an incredibly beautiful area. It harbors species that can only live in the temperate rainforest. The temperate rainforest in this part of the world as it is in in many parts of the world is disappearing very, very quickly. Here on the west coast of Canada in the province of British Columbia, our temperate rainforests reach their most magnificent size on the west coast of Vancouver Island, right where the Walburn Valley is. It's a once in a planet's lifetime to hold on to a landscape that's found nowhere else on Earth. That's what's at stake in the Walburn. But the whole blueprint is still there, locked up around us. Many, many parts of the world have destroyed all their wild ecosystems. They have only managed plantations, which are highly degraded, impoverished ecosystems. And they, they can't figure out uh, how to, uh, to duplicate what we have right here. Nobody knows what we're wiping out when we wipe them out. And here we have in the wild brand, we have extreme beauty uh, indescribable beauty. We have genetic diversity such as we don't even know yet. We have a threatened species, the marbled merlet was put on the uh, endangered list as a threatened species in 1990 and the um, federal provincial report said the marbled merlet is threatened because of its habitat is old growth coastal forests which are now so rare south of Alaska that this bird is threatened. There's only been one nest found in Canada and that was found in the West Walburn area. We've only gotten into this area in the last month and we've done seven surveys and uh, the highest number of merlets that we detected in one morning was 76. So we feel there is a good population here but we haven't had a chance to study it yet and uh, we won't be able to if 
as the road building and logging continues. And I have been uh, what I would call an environmentalist for uh, 35 years. And I've been in many battles and have won almost none, which is the story of, of what's happened to BC. I've watched places I canoe to and hike in are now like this. I mean, I've seen it all go. So here, when you get down to the last few, I think it's It's an emergency. I just got the RCMP that's supposed to be a neutral third party on no. We are. Good. I'm not. I have no desire to take your jobs away from you, but I don't believe that clear-cutting this ancient forest is going to keep your jobs. Do you and realize that... we have the lawful right to be here? I've heard the injunction. Yeah. And you're not prepared to move? I'm not prepared to move. Although the law says that you have the right, I think that there's something in my heart that tells me that we need to save this for young people like us, for the other young people that are here. For you. But I want to know, are you going to move or aren't you going to move? I am not going to move. In 1890, the vast majority of Vancouver Island was covered with ancient forest. Are you going to stand aside and let our people go to work this morning? Or no, I'm afraid I can't. By 1940, the east side of the island had been largely logged. Major valleys on the rest of the island were being actively logged. Thank you. Are you going to abide by the injunction and stand aside and allow the loggers to go to work this morning? No, I'm sorry, I can't. Oh, okay. In 1990, few significant areas of old growth forest remain, and only a few watersheds are unlogged. Are you prepared to get up and move? We have no land use strategy. We have no old growth forest strategy. We have no protection of the environment. Right now, as we are sitting here protesting about what our government and Fletcher Challenge is doing to our forest, there are people climbing the head office of Fletcher Challenge in Wellington, New Zealand. <laughs> We're not sustaining fish and wildlife habitat. We're not sustaining recreational or tourism opportunities. We're not sustaining jobs. Union Carbide of Bhopal fame, the same PR firm that handled the image problem of Bhopal is now working similar magic on behalf of BC forest industry. We are not seeing any protection of the ancient forest. It's very blatantly clear. We must change and go on a new tack. And the first thing we're asking for is a moratorium on road building and logging in the lower Walden Valley. The blockade is held. Right on. And everybody's to be congratulated. Right on. Right on. Right on. Oh. Right on. Oh. We've challenged Fletcher okay. and, and, and we're waiting for them to make their move. a base camp around the South Waldron Bridge to 
cover the three possible locations where they can construct roads with the road building permit. Wait a minute, who, who built the base camp, they or you? We have. We have two base camps now, one at the bridge and a temporary base camp that we, um, where we sleep at night. It's nice to get a couple hours, everyone at one point in the day after blockading activities or whatnot, usually disperses into the forest to have some time to connect with Mama Earth and to um, remember the trees, remember why we're there, standing for the trees and for the lichen and fungi and for the animals and for the rocks and the river. Federal Fisheries Officer Don Stevens has said that logging practices in areas immediately adjacent to the wild run have resulted in widespread loss of fish habitat. What will happen if those same practices move into the sensitive salmon spawning grounds of the Wabran Creek? Where there's a continuous recycling of nutrients from the trees to the trees falling down and decomposing with the aid of myriads of different types of organisms and creatures. The, the old growth trees feeding the young growing trees, falling into the water and providing nutrients for the fish and uh, the aquatic insects that live in the creeks. Um, so it's a wonderful example of a, of a system that has been working for thousands of years. And that's, to me, one of the things that makes it really special. very hard to start punching a road through the last wilderness area right to the boundaries of Pacific Rim National Park. Today, Pacific Rim National Park is a large strip, only a kilometer or two wide along the ocean in this park. It's not, it's not viable as an ecosystem without the wilderness area of the Walburn adjoining it. Is Fletcher Challenge willing to give us time? No using their grapple yarders and their bulldozers like tanks and armored personnel carriers. My daughter helped build the hiking trails in this valley last summer and, uh, and make it accessible to people. And so people have been coming in, myself included, and now we're aware of, of, of what a treasure this is. Um, I came here camping a couple of months ago with my daughter and we camped in the most beautiful spot we've ever camped in in our entire lives and and before the weekend was over I found out that Fletcher Challenge plans to put a, a logging road through that spot and uh, I uh, that made me angry. I don't want to hear the trees, trees are screaming no more, no more, oh no more. I don't want to hear the trees are screaming no more, no more, oh no more. I don't want to hear the trees are screaming no more, no more, oh no more. You can't clear cut our future no more. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Are you prepared to get up and move? Okay, you're under arrest now and I'd appreciate it if you get up, please. Thank you. The only way I can tolerate what's happening is to be with people who are so caring that they're willing to give up a great deal, even go to jail or be put through the system of total injustice, which is what we have in BC. I don't notice Fletcher Challenge is polluted for three years in a row with mills in jail. I don't know if any of them being charged, and yet young people on a logging road in their own land are, are taken off to jail and charged. If 
Buddy might just come out with a little bit of a bite on him too. Well. The dog is loose and he gets a hold of him. It's unfortunate. Fair warning. We're here to play fair, to be honest with you people. Anybody that doesn't act reasonable with us, we have resources. And unfortunately, when it comes to this, we have to use them. And you people will suffer the consequences. Well, we have to be heard, unfortunately, as well. There's been people who have uh, been climbing the trees and uh, sitting in platforms with uh, full safety gear um, during the day to prevent them from, from cutting into this, this beautiful uh, ancient forest. And uh, today, when the logger climbed the tree to chop the platform out from under one of the tree sitters, uh, the tree sitter asked him if he was uh, willing to take responsibility if he would die because he was endangering his life. And the logger said, uh, sure, uh, I could bury you. They, they began falling behind me, close to my other friend on the other side. Then they uh, chopped at my tree a few times with an axe right in front of the RCMP. All the way up, he was chopping at the tree taking off, there used to be branches quite a ways down. They're all gone. Uh, my platform's gone. My equipment's gone. And I asked the policewoman to stop him because putting us both in danger. Um, she was cracking jokes about it. But isn't it the role of the police to ensure everybody's safety? Certainly. And a guy like that is with this attitude, is climbing a tree with an axe to cut out a guy's back. You have to understand, too, that it's like sucking the cougar you know. into the chicken cage to get the <laughs> chicken eggs. Well, not quite. I had to um, physically, physically block them from chopping the branches of my tree platform with my arms and legs to stop them chainsawing and putting axes through them. Um, while all this was going on, and while I was put, put in a life-threatening situation by these two riggers, the police officer, who had previously been at the foot of my tree, turned off his video camera and walked away. Is your camera on? Yeah. That's all. Well, I understand the frustration you feel. Reverse that and say, well, oh. here's a logger that's trying to feed his family and pay the mortgage on his house and has been doing it for 30 years. What frustration does he feel? That's why there's no way because he should he's be going to get laid off. Be nice to those boys. Yeah. Trying to save your jobs too. There isn't a logger today that can pass his cork boots onto his children. Not one of them. No. Because there's only a few years left. You see? They remove it so quickly. They take it out so fast. It's my opinion that with the skyrocketing rate of cut, that these companies do not intend to be here much longer after they log the first growth. It's get rich, pull out. And the way it is now, we are at the moment removing 600,000 acres a year in British Columbia. That is what our cut is right now. 600,000 acres a year. Now, we don't have to go too far in school to realize that in 10 years, at the rate they're ex going with grapple yarders, excessive road building, smash and ripping and tearing, in 10 years, our economy is going to be up against the wall here. At no time in our history have we ever had fewer workers employed by cutting a tree. It's gotten worse for workers. Uh, from habitat and fisheries, look, we've already logged most of our valley bottoms. We've never been logging more on steep-sided slopes. It's a very mountainous area here, which means we've never created as many landslides, soil erosions, and destruction of salmon streams as we are right today. So why is the Canadian government saying different? Because of companies like Fletcher Challenge, who are orchestrating this, who are putting huge pressure on the government by threatening to turn off 
jobs. That their mills are shutting down and, and people are losing their jobs. We need to keep the wood at home and uh, create uh, factories for, for high value added ma manufacturing of wood products, which pr produce six times the amount of jobs that uh, our big conventional saw mills and pulp mills produce. So um, we, we really need a government that's going to take the initiative to retrain the workers in the kind of labor that, that uh, doesn't require we destroy our last intact ecosystems. A tree farm isn't a forest, it's not the same thing. A tree farm is a farm and it grows crops just like wheat or carrots or whatever crops you'd grow in another farm. So you're only planting one kind of tree and it's the kind that's commercially valuable. All of the other plants, trees and all the other organisms you can't replant. We are losing species to extinction at the rate of one per hour. The temperate rainforest is a rich repository of biodiversity, a genetic library that we can't afford to lose. The yew tree found in ancient forests such as the Walbran is the source of Taxol, a newly discovered cancer-fighting drug. There are species in the Walbran that have been found nowhere else, such as a primitive relative to the tarantula and the carnivorous trout of Anderson Lake. Only preliminary surveys have been done. Who knows what other unique species will be found in a forest which has existed untouched for thousands of years. So when you, when you clear cut a large area, all of the subspecies that were living in that area are gone forever. You can't replant a fungus, you can't replant a moss, and you certainly can't replant a marbled murrelet. The lichens take 150 years or more to come back and they're one of the primary nitrogen fixes for the soil. So, so the soil is unable to be regenerated by the plants which are left after a clear cut. And we'll see in 200 or 240 years time, by the time we get a third rotation in the ground, um, we'll do, we just won't be able to grow trees on it. The soil will be, have by that time become so depleted that we'll be looking at a desert just as we have a deserts forming in the tropics. It really adds to the act quite a bit if they're getting hauled away to uh, truck to jail for being um, uh, defending the uh, natural beauty of Canada uh, that we truck kids off to jail. So uh, I had planned to come and play Oh Canada Glorious and Free as they, uh, as they took off. So I can probably uh, screech it out for you if that's what you'd like to hear. World. To embarrass this government and to change, it's the only way that's going to stop. But before that happens, we'll try and slow them down. The company consistently claims that it's acting according to the laws of Canada, but the fact is, is there are no laws here. There's no Environmental Protection Act, there's no Endangered Species Act, for God's sake, there's no Water and Soil Protection Act. It's up to the company you know, to do all the monitoring. It's the poacher and the gamekeeper of uh, one. It's <clears throat> really, it's, um, I'm really quite flabbergasted at just how backward a political situation there exists here in Canada. So we are arguing very strongly that there is no true democratic process, that the government, uh, in cooperation with corporations, are railroading this through. I mean, come on, the, the government's own commission on old growth strategy recommended this be put aside for two years. The cabinet vetoed it behind closed doors. So we don't really see that kind of democratic process happening.
Yeah. There are fogs working in there, ma'am. Would you please step behind the line? Come on. Yeah. Out you get. You also, sir, would you please step behind the line? This, you can't do this. The people out in the woods stood up and said, we are not going to cut in this manner any further. Well, I mean, we talked to a lot of individual fallers who feel that way, but are afraid, of course, for their jobs to stand up alone and make that kind of a statement. If the uh, union stood up and said, we're not going to cut in this manner, I think it would stop immediately. Well, all I can say is we're working on it. Okay. You know, I live beside this river. And they've watched this river change and grow for 800 years. I have lived here through the wind and the fire and the snow. I've seen gray glaciers melting. I've met lightning eye to eye. And now I hear bulldozers coming and I am soon to die. But who will house the owl? And who will hold that river shore? Who will take refuge in my shadow and my shadow? Well, I've cut down trees that were 2,000 years old. A 14-foot cedar, solid, right through. No kidding. When that thing went down, yeah, there was a minor tremble on the ground, like a small earthquake. And you look at that thing, and I know, you know in the last few years when I was falling, I suddenly got the idea that, uh, you know, I got an hour's wages out of that, and it took 2,000 years to grow. That tells me something, that I don't think we're going to see any of this again. Or any person or persons under their instructions or in any person or persons known or unknown, having knowledge of this order, be restrained until this trial or other disposition of this action from directly or indirectly. A. Interfering with or encouraging or counseling others to interfere with the performance by the plaintiff of his contract with the Minister of Forest of British Columbia on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen and right of the province of British Columbia from logging the road building in the area covered by Tree Farm License 46, which includes the Walbrand watershed, Logan Creek and the part of Tully Creek, collectively referred to as the Walbrand, on Vancouver Island in the province of British Columbia. B, creating a nuisance by obstructing the plaintiff from carrying on logging and road building in the wall brand on Vancouver Island in the province of British Columbia. C, preventing, impeding, restricting, or in any way interfering with the plaintiff from logging and road building in the wall brand on Vancouver Island in the province of British Columbia. D, engaging in any act which interfere with the contractual relations between the plaintiff and its employees, servants, agents, or other persons having business with the plaintiff. This court further orders that during blasting hours, no person except those authorized by the plaintiff may come within the distance of 1,000 meters of blasting. And this court further orders that the defendants, uh, John Doe, Jane Doe, and persons unknown, and any other persons affected by this order, have liberty to apply on one day's notice to set aside or vary this order by the court signed by the Deputy District Registrar and take notice that if you, the bodies or persons affected by this order, neglect to obey this order, you will be liable to process of execution and proceedings for attachment and contempt. <laughs>